Hi, everyone. It's Joe Venary, the host of Fit Insider, the show where I talk with the entrepreneurs, executives, and investors who are redefining the business of fitness and wellness. Today, I'm joined by Avram Elmikis, founder and CEO of Climber, a connected vertical climbing machine. In this episode, we talk about launching a company during a pandemic, introducing a new piece of equipment to the connected fitness category, why Climber plans to target the commercial sector in addition to at home, and how the company landed investors like Jay-Z, Pitbull, and Novak Djokovic. Let's get into it. Hi, Avram. Welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Excited to have this chat today. And I think to kick things off, can you tell listeners about yourself and what you're working on at Climber? Yeah. So I'm an entrepreneur, uh, kind of, uh, you know, started my career in a completely different industry and in pet products and uh, ventured into fitness with Climber, which is, in our collective opinion, a great uh, both commercial and uh, at home fitness tool uh, for, for folks looking for something different and unique. Yeah. I think it does stand out kind of in the category of connected fitness, uh, just given the modality. So a Versa climber and upright climber, I'm not sure how you specify it, but those, those things definitely stand out to me. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but where did the idea come from? And you make, you mentioned making that transition from pet products to connected fitness. So you can tell us about that transition and maybe how long you've been working on the company. Yeah. So, you know, the way I look, I view business in general is, you know, building a business is fairly similar no matter what vertical we're in. Um, But the most analogous thing about what I did in pet and I think what what we're doing here at Climber is seeking to kind of disrupt the status quo, if you will, is is kind of looking at a paradigm or a construct that exists and challenging that with something you know, new and unique. Uh, This idea first came to me in late 2018, having been introduced to VersaClimber technology uh, and deploying it personally um, across some commercial locations, uh, just really kind of the epiphany of, hey, we can really popularize a modality that is amazing, that's efficient, that's safe, Uh, but do it in a way that has great appeal so that it's comfortable for the users, it's easy to maintain, and it's kind of current with the times. Yeah, when I think one thing, when you look at the landscape as it currently stands, there's obviously smart bikes and treadmills, rowing machines, and now we're starting to see like more around strength training. Um, But how do you think about climber and, and even the climbing modality within that landscape? Yeah, so I, I think it all starts with primal movement. And, you know, we're all born the same way. We all crawl, and it's a very primal, efficient movement. And it's not only uh, very efficient for the body and biomechanically correct, um, but it's also very productive. Uh, so, and, 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 I guess there's another counterpoint to that. It's it's neurologically beneficial. So if you you actually have to think about putting your your right hand up and your left leg down in that contralateral motion, and kind of the easiest way for me to convey this to folks is kind of the advent of the stand up desk. Um, and when we think about our work lives or home lives you know, most of us are now incorporating a stand up desk in some capacity. And the idea is that you know, the, the body is really made to move um, in, a, in a vertical way. And so the notion of sitting down to, to do our exercise just wasn't something that ever really appealed to me. And, uh, and I seek to kind of share this education, if you will, with, with a variety of folks, whether they be looking to innovate uh, in their commercial locations as a revenue tool or just uh, embark on their wellness journey wherever they may be at home. Yeah, I think there's two things you mentioned in there that I want to maybe unpack. The first being, you know, this idea of how it is beneficial, what the the benefits are of using the climber. So what do you think, or how are you approaching educating the consumer on these benefits when so many people do think of, you know, the stationary cardio equipment um, of a bicycle, an elliptical, a treadmill? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, we have a tendency as people to kind of go with what's in front of us. And, um, you know, 
great companies are, are great at branding and marketing. And even though things might not be biomechanically the best option for us, um, it's what's present until something really comes out and disrupts it. But the idea is, is that your whole body's in motion, the user's generating that motion, and form is a lot more controlled in the third dimension. So if we were to take a video recording of any spin class, you know, the, the lumbar spine of those participants is really all over the place in terms of, you know, where they're at. Uh, similarly to rowing, as far as treadmills are, are concerned, I think, you know, there's so much scientific evidence out there that would point to just a, a tremendous amount of impact created on the, on the joint structure of the body. So, you know, climbing is and has been proven both through peer-reviewed and, and clinical studies to be uh, more efficient in creating kind of a caloric deficit per minute. Uh, but most important to me is really the safety, um, you know, profile of the equipment and, and providing something that is fine for somebody who's had a stroke um, to rehab on, but also fine for a professional athlete um, who, who's looking to, to chase the, the maximum output of their body, you know, body's efficiency. Sure. And the other thing you mentioned was the applications. And I think at least as far as, you know, I'm following the industry, a lot of different connected devices coming out for the home. You don't hear people talking a lot about the commercial application just right from the jump, but you are doing that. So you can, can you talk about how you see this fitting into commercial um, locations, gyms, hotels, apartments, maybe all the above? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, we can unpack that in three different ways. You mentioned gyms, hotels, and apartments, but I think in reference to gyms, I think, you know, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn and saying that in the post COVID world, uh, people are going to be looking for innovation and people are going to be looking to do more in less space. And we accomplish that by using a lot of the vertical space in a, in a four wall environment and not requiring a ton of floor space uh, for the equipment. So I think uh, for gyms who are providing any type of hit uh, training via cardio devices and, and, you know, it's, it's the berries, the orange theories of the world. Um, they have a tendency to rely heavily on treadmills. Um, and, and our hope is, is through education and, and peer reviewed studies that they can say, Hey, well, wait a minute, we can offer, uh, you know, more classes in less square footage and accomplish the same output, uh, with a higher safety profile, you know, that's a, that's a very appealing uh, thing. I think for us, which is what's very different in climbing to bicycles and treadmills and rowers is there's just not a lot of education or awareness in the market today. I mean, we're seeking to change that, but it would be very unlike, uh, unlikely for a, a boutique gym to put in Pelotons, in, in my opinion, because the experience is the instructor and the community and the vibe that's created in the room. Um, so we sought out early to, to serve kind of both markets with, with the tool and, and found that to be a beautiful point of differentiation and, and a tool to really educate uh, folks quickly. As it relates to multifamily residential hotel applications, I think increasingly those uh, consumers of those entities are looking to the fitness facility, you know, when choosing what hotel they're going to stay in or, or, or what apartment building to rent in uh, based a lot of times around, you know, the amenity profile of said building. And so I think, you know, we hope to, uh, to really make a splash in both areas. Yeah, I think it's really smart. I think it's definitely a way to stand out and differentiate. Also talk about if you have it other places, folks seeing it somewhere, wanting it for their home. So now they have, you know, potentially using it outside the home and in the home. Um, did that factor into how you think about the market for this product? Because, you know, to me at first glance, I'm like, yeah, how many people are, are like shopping for a stationary, like vertical at home climber. But when you factor in this other piece around residential, have you, or not residential, rather commercial, have you broken them out and thinking about this percentage as we forecast sales is going to come from commercial? This is going to come from maybe single family. 
You know, we're still early, Jess. I mean, it's a great question. I, I think we're going to have quite a bit of sales in both. And I don't think it's a function of consumers saying, hey, you know, uh, I'm in the market for a vertical climber. I think it's a function of consumers saying, look, I'm trying to get in shape and I want to do it safely and efficiently. And I think it's incumbent upon us as as the uh, the brand owner and the the uh, manufacturer to educate them and make them aware that when they get to that point of purchase, maybe they didn't know that a that a vertical climber could could offer um, you know better results in a safer way. And so I think it's uh, you know the market is is really frankly uh, a lot of different folks, um, not just people saying, "Hey, I'm looking for a vertical climber." Yeah. And then that piece goes back to what you mentioned around the education, getting the word out there as to how efficient this product is, the results that it can drive. But then the other piece is, you know, building the brand. So it does stand out in this broader kind of at-home fitness market. How have you thought about building the brand and establishing it as something that people, you know, want to turn to and attracts them as they're shopping for a product like this? You know, I think it comes back to authenticity, Right. I, I think, you know, you can you can s- try lots of different things. I, I, I very firmly believe in experimenting with lots of different equipment and then finding the one that suits the individual the best. Um, I think what we offer is extremely unique in a sea of sameness. Right. And when I look at the market, it's Typically, hey, here's a new treadmill that goes up and down. Here's a bike with a screen on it that goes side to side. Here's a new bike with a new screen on it that goes side to side. And, you know, what I seek to do is really disrupt that. And I think it starts with, uh, you know, professional athletes. I mean, very rarely will you find a a professional athlete, you know, engaging uh, in hardcore treadmill training um, these days because they kind of know that there's a significant amount of impact caused by that and prefer to, you know, save their bodies for the sports that they're, you know, that they're actually playing in. And and I think, you know, whether we're talking about golf or basketball or football or tennis or or what have you, um, athletes are increasingly looking to preserve the longevity of their bodies for whatever sport it is. So I think it really starts with, um, athletes and then it and then it bridges to the medical community where we've got some great clinical trials uh, getting ready to to get underway here where we can biomechanically show uh, the form of of the same person on a rower on a treadmill on a bicycle and then on a climber and uh, objectively right it's not subjective at that point we're able to say okay via vo2 max via emg via lots of different you know proven medical um you know testing you know we, we are offering something that's superior in a variety of different ways yeah that'll be interesting to see come out especially as you you know seek to introduce this product and then to your point shake up the the industry and the landscape a little bit um kind of pivoting to some recent headlines it looks like from the outside looking in it's been a busy couple of weeks i'm sure it's been a busy you know couple of years at this point but more recently launching on indiegogo uh how did that campaign go and and maybe how did that compare the expectations versus the actual outcome Yeah. So, you know, proud to say that we've been live on Indiegogo for about two and a half weeks. Um, The the market response to our campaign is uh, is is number one in in market. So, you know, if we look at Peloton was able to to accomplish about 300 K in 30 days. Hydro about a million dollars in 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 30 days. I think we're we're kind of proving the case that people are are really hungry for innovation in this category and and looking for something different but we couldn't be more pleased with the uh the early results and um they kind of speak for themselves right and going into it i mean i'm sure internally with the team you're thinking hey we hope this goes well we we think it's going to go well um how do those things compare were were you were you even kind of surprised at how well it, it's doing or did you see this coming in terms of that innovation in the category you know i i guess i would answer that two ways uh one 
very surprised that there was this amount of interest, um, you know, with with people voting with their their wallets for a product that they won't receive for for quite some time because we're just we're we're a startup and we're getting ready to move into our manufacturing phase and and content creation and delivery. Um, but it's just an incredible amount of trust uh, that's been placed upon us, and it's not something that we take lightly. Um, the other part of me isn't really surprised because you know we've shared thus far, you know, the, some of the leaders in their respective areas, whether they be entertainers or, or athletes. Um, it's just authentic, right? And I think the consumer really um, sees that, understands that very quickly. Um, versus any type of paid endorsements where we say, hey, ex-athlete, we want to pay you money to, to pretend that you actually do this <laughs> for training versus on our side, it's more of, you know, we, we've got to just turn people away because, you know, the, they this is really what what's used when you get into the locker rooms and you, and you look at, hey, um, what are what are people interested in? So I guess I am, and I'm not surprised if if I can answer it that way. Definitely, yeah. I think pleasantly surprised. Um, hoping to keep that momentum going. Uh, you also mentioned kind of where things are: manufacturing, timeline, shipping product. Can you walk us through that? Just one. What has it been like to kind of line some of these things up during a global pandemic? Two. What does that timeline look like to start shipping product? Great question. I think when we think about the global pandemic and when we think about the overall timeline, COVID really uh, hampered our ability to travel internationally. And our manufacturing is done in, in both China and Taiwan. And uh, and it set us back significantly. We were scheduled and slated to have a booth at URSA uh, this year, which I believe the pandemic officially closed most of the U.S. down around the March 15th uh, timeline. And so, you know, to, to kind of navigate a lot of these meetings over Zoom and, uh, you know, but but overall, I would say it set us back, I would say a solid six to nine months. Um, but we are coming out of that. We have our, our team in, uh, you know, in Asia and out of quarantine, and we're looking forward to uh, moving into large scale production here in Q1 of next year and, and our first deliveries happening in June of next year. Wow. So moving right along and, and trying to maybe play catch up a little bit, um, still the, the market, given the, the sales and the, the Indiegogo campaign, uh, I think to your point, demonstrating a lot of trust as you guys ramp up. One of the other headlines beyond the, the launch on Indiegogo was the number of, and, and some big name investors, uh, Jay-Z, Pitbull, uh, Novak Djokovic, uh, how did those relationships come about and why did they ultimately decide to invest? Yeah. Um, again, I, I th this is all going to come back to authenticity, right? It's, it, you know, if, if we were on a, if, if we had some of these athletes and some of these entertainers on the phone, they would say, Hey, I, I am so concerned about preserving, you know, my system, my physical system. And I, I really believe in the modality of climbing, not only it's in, a, in its efficiency and the, and the pureness there, but also in the safety, right? Because they're really using their bodies as a tool. So most of these folks were either, uh, you know, firsthand relationships of our existing board, my, myself, uh, or organically reached out to us and said, gosh, you know, I love what it is that you're doing. How do I get involved? How can I invest? How can I be a part of bringing this amazing technology to the world? So it's been this incredible story and, and we've only shared probably 5% uh, you know, of, of what's really to come. So, you know, whether you're watching television or, you know, what have you, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot more of Climber here in the next, uh, in the next several weeks and, and months to come. We'll definitely be keeping an eye out for sure. Uh, on that point, just about the kind of celebrity entertainer investors, obviously this is becoming 
playing a bigger role in the development of fitness content. Uh, so the music being critical to that, you have folks like Jay-Z and Pitbull, obviously Beyonce and Peloton just teamed up, which was kind of a massive headline. Are there plans to collaborate on content? And maybe that's exclusive to Climber. How are you thinking about leveraging those relationships? Yeah, all the above. It can be exclusive content. It can be live classes uh, that are hosted with some of your favorite entertainers and celebrities. Uh, content is something that, you know, we're, we're consciously also going to be differentiating in terms of, you know, how we perceive, uh, you know, delivery and, and consumption of content uh, as it relates to fitness. So I think you'll see really all the above. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have a couple other iterations in there that, that have yet to be seen in, in the fitness industry. But to your point, I think it'll be, um, you know, it'll be all the things you mentioned and more. Yeah. Maybe digging in a little bit on that point, thinking about the content, uh, anything you'd be able to share on that front, I'd be excited to hear because you, there's the music aspect, there's the instructors, which play a critical part. And, you know, when you look at the number of whether it's devices or, or apps that exist, there's now even more kind of competition for recruiting talented instructors to develop these classes. So even at this point in the early days, how are you developing that content and what are you thinking about? You mentioned differentiating from things that exist in the fitness industry. So what's that thought process like? Yeah. I mean, without getting into, you know, IP and, uh, you know, a lot of the different things we have behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I think the way that people would agree that content is deployed today most commonly is, you know, each of these companies has a production studio uh, with, with trainers and then it's filmed and then it's distributed either live or on demand. Um, I think that that's status quo. And, whether it's incorporating other businesses, whether it's incorporating users, whether it's, you know, the, the inclusion of gamification and, and a lot of other different paths or augmented reality, there's, there's yet to be someone, at least in, from my standpoint, that's, that's in, created something inspiring that hasn't been done. And so we really seek to, you know, create a lot of innovation uh, not only with a with a machine um, and a modality, uh, but but also from a content uh, user experience standpoint, I think people will be um, very excited to to see what we have planned there. Yeah, naturally, we'll have you know what what you see today, right? We have a film studio, we have our instructors, we have a uh, you know a great camera setup and lights, camera action. But I think that that's you know, kind of uh, admission to the game. I, I think what we what we seek to do and what we're very good at is is kind of changing the uh, the fabric, if you will. Yeah. In addition to a topic that's come up, the, the authenticity piece is definitely a through line. The other one is like this this idea of disruption, innovation. You know, everything from the the equipment itself to utilizing commercial space to developing the content and some of these relationships. Uh, I'd be curious to know, how are you thinking about building out the team to ensure success and innovate uh, around you as you're coming up with these ideas and introducing what sounds like um, some pretty innovative ideas into the landscape? You know, it's, it's, it's a concert of people. Right. I, I always look at part of my role as a CEO is kind of conducting a, a, a train. It's this beautiful symphony, if you will, of, of people. And they all have their, you know, different functional areas where they excel. But I think real magic happens when this authentic collaboration occurs. Um, as And it happens in so many different ways, whether we're talking about exercise physiology and, and the, the the movement of a body, right? And that's, you know, the neurosurgeons and the spinal surgeons and the exercise physiologists on the team, whether we're talking about content, uh, Chad Hurley, who's, who's on my board, who, again, just sent me an email uh, introducing himself. He had co-founded YouTube uh, and then sold that to Google, really helping me think through the content journey. Um, other folks that are really technologists, when they think about how a user wants to, 
relate to a piece of equipment and technology. And, you know, it just, the, it goes on and on and on. Um, but I think that the, the key thread, if you will, in, in redesigning the way we think about, uh, you know, purchasing a piece of fitness equipment, whether it be connected or not, is, uh, is, is this intense thoughtfulness about the consumer and how they want to use it and, and ensuring that it's something that people do want to use on a regular basis and it doesn't become kind of legacy furniture for lack of a better, for lack of a better term in the house. So I always, I always revert back to, it's about people, it's about teams and, and it all has to be guided authentically. It can't be, it can't be a marketing exercise because marketing exercises don't stick. Sure. So team, we've kind of checked off the list, the music, the the hardware itself. I think the content development, one other area that gets discussed a lot that I wanted to bring up was community as it relates to the fitness experience. And now that conversation shifting to digital communities. Uh, how are you thinking about that as you build out the strategy at Climber? Uh, love that question. We are in the process of building out what we're calling our climber community. And then within that, there's these subdomains, if you will. So there's people that are, uh, that are going to intend to use our equipment to, you know, achieve peak physical performance and say, look, I, I'm starved for time. And rather than ride a bike for an hour, I'll do a climber for 20 minutes and I'm able to do the same thing, right? You know, objectively. Uh, then there's people that say, hey, you know, I suffer from uh, autism or I suffer from MS and I can't you know, use the existing exercise equipment. Um, so the way I look at it is one massive climber community, but within that, there's all these sub communities um, of folks that are reaching out to us saying, you know, hey, I want to be a part of this. So I think community is a key uh, because it it'll never take the place, if you will, of in my mind of you know the feeling. It's hard. To, that's now we're talking about subjective and emotional stuff, but the the feeling of being in a class and sharing that energy live and in, in the flesh, I don't think can ever be replicated um, at home. But we are certainly going to try our best to do it. Absolutely, such a key part of the overall experience. Um, as we look to wrap up, we're getting towards the end here, one thing I did, and it, you know, it might be it's early days, so this might be looking too far down the line, but of course, you might be way ahead of, of where I'm thinking. Um, there's a couple of different approaches in the connected fitness space. There are companies that are introducing multiple pieces of equipment, rowers, bikes, uh, treadmills, you name it, and then there's kind of companies that are focused on one particular product. Have you thought about introducing other products besides the climber as time goes on? No, we, uh, I, I really believe that focus is key. And I believe with focus, you can become more powerful as a team and an organization and a company. And if you're focused on something that you really believe in, that, that, um, you know, is better than, then the rest of that stuff is just part of a conversation, but not really that relevant. And so, you know, I, I don't really have any aspiration to introduce a bike, a, a treadmill, a rower, um, partly because, you know, and again, I think moving, doing anything is better than nothing. Uh, but, but I just don't, you know, see a tremendous amount of interest there, both for me personally or us as a business. No, I respect that. Usually you get a little bit more meandering of an answer. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. We'll see how it goes. I think you were direct on that. No. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, it's, it's important to a common thing, a theme that I see, whether it's, you know, talking to early entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs in the middle of their entrepreneurial journey or whatever is the, the tendency to be distracted and just be okay at a lot of different things is very appealing to a lot of folks. And I always caution against that and becoming great at one thing, because I think um, you can have a, a greater amount of success overall in, in, in accomplishing the mission. 
Yeah, absolutely agreed. And and staying focused and and keeping things moving. We'll actually uh, get you out of here on this. We're we're getting into the end of the year. Obviously, twenty twenty one around the corner. What should we keep an eye out for? What's on the radar at Climber? Yeah, I mean, we're going to continue our, our Indiegogo campaign here uh, for for a few more weeks and and then uh, have some exciting things coming. I don't think you'll be able to miss us um, in terms of, uh, you know, whether whether that's through uh, through a variety of different media. So um, look forward to really sharing uh, everything from our medical work to uh, to to our other athletes and celebrities that that we've yet to disclose to, you know, uh, sharing climber through some of our, you know, most beloved TV and, and, uh, you know, shows and things like that. So it's a, it's a very exciting time. And, and, and I think it'll be, uh, much more to come here in the very near future. Absolutely. Exciting times. And we will certainly be following along. I'm excited to share this conversation as you know, you guys continue to get all the word out about what you're working on. So thanks so much for joining us. And like I said, excited. I think listeners will find a lot of value in, in what we talked about today. Awesome. It's been my absolute pleasure and, and love what you guys do at Fit and happy to be a part of it. Thanks everyone for listening to today's episode. For more from Fit Insider, visit insider.fit.co and subscribe to our weekly newsletter for insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Then go ahead and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. See you next time.